Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. Right behind me is Fitzwilliam House um, on the little green in Richmond upon Thames, London. And that's where Harold Wilson lived from 1943 to 45. So on that first floor there, that's flat four. Um, so Harold Wilson is um, renowned for having been Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1964 to 1970 and again 74 until um, 1976. So uh, Wilson, he um, was the longest serving Labour Prime Minister until Blair came along. And apart from Blair, he's the only Labour Prime Minister to have won um, three elections. Well, um, no, you could say you could say four elections. He didn't win the popular vote in one of the, one of the one more seats. That's, uh, oh my goodness, have I got it right? February 1974. So, um, Wilson, uh, he was born um, in uh, Huddersfield, Yorkshire, in 1916, and his father was an industrial chemist who was out of work a lot in the in the 1930s. So um, Harold Wilson, he went to the local grammar school. He was head boy, um, and uh, then he uh, won a scholarship to Oxford University. So. Um, he was deeply affected by his experiences of relative penury uh, in the 1930s. Uh, and he was initially a member of the Liberal Party, but he got to uh, university and he decided really the Liberals had no future and he shifted over to the Labour Party. It was a well-worn path for people who were on the progressive side, of, side in politics, but were thrustingly ambitious because um, by the time he was an undergraduate, sort of 1934, the Liberal Party was in the doldrums, was um, hopelessly split, a very fissile movement because, well, I suppose they're very individualistic, was Labour's at least collectivist. So if you wanted, if you wanted um, a reform, you wanted to do more for the working class, Labour was surely the party, party for you. So um, he joined them. He'd been smoking tobacco since his teens, and he was soon um, smoking a pipe. So he was a tubby chap, not much good at games, and he maintained a mild Yorkshire accent, and remember, um, at, at Oxford in the 30s, uh, most of the undergraduates were upper class, a few were middle class, virtually nobody was working class, he was probably lower middle class, which is why he had a, a gentler version of a Yorkshire accent. Um, anyway, so uh, the, he, was, he was a don briefly at Univ, and I, I could show you where I believe his rooms were. Um, anyway, the Second World War came along, and um, he was then a civil servant. So even though he's quite young, he's only young enough to, to join the armed forces, age 23. They said, told, no, your duty lies here. So um, anyway, he was in London most of the Second World War. Obviously, there's some danger because the Blitz was on, moving here. Um, very quiet back in those days. Hardly anybody had a car. And I'll just show you the um, absolutely heavenly view he had of Richmond Green. Have a look at this. And the Thames is not far away. It's not even a quarter of a mile that way, just, just beyond those houses, just out of sight. So um, he was brought up one of the non-conformist churches. I don't remember which one, actually. Um, he married just at the end of the Second World War. He had two sons, or is it three? Later, he moved to Hampstead. Uh, I believe his eldest son was Robin. One of them later became a train driver. His younger son was at, was at Bailey or went up at about 1979 because one of my late friends, um, Anthony James, uh, knew him. So he was um, right at the end of the first Labour government. He was already already a, a junior minister because he was elected part of 1945 for Highton, which is just outside Liverpool. He liked to claim that the, the Beatles were almost constituents of his. Highton being spelled H-U-Y-T-O-N is also a surname. Um, anyway, so he's married to Mary happily through, through for all his years and um, was on the opposition front bench in the 1950s, so as the shadow cabinet. Um, and then Hugh Gateskill um, suddenly died in, I think it was January 1963. Oh, it could have been lupus, but uh, there were all people say that he was assassinated by the Soviets. And in Red Horizons, Jan, Jan Pacepa, that former uh, Romanian security officer, claimed that the Soviets uh, bumped him off by a poison, which made it look like it was like it was lupus. I've no idea if that's true or not. But um, in the 1950s, there'd been a bit of a thorn relations between Western countries um, and the Soviet Union just after the death of Stalin in 1953. So um, Harold Wilson, he went to Moscow several times. He was often accompanied by Marcia Faulkner, um, and uh, she was married. She had children as well, slightly younger than, than um, he was. She was slightly younger than Wilson. Um, and she wasn't a politician. She did something rather for the Labour Party, some administrative position, if I got that right. And they were staying the same uh, Moscow hotel. Uh, there were very few foreign tourists. Western tourists had to be very carefully minded by, by uh, Soviet guides. 
So then the speculation is, um, did he have uh, an extramarital affair with her? Were they hopping into bed with each other? All these um, KGB-run ho hotels, as in Soviet Secret Service, had um, these, these, these false mirrors. Well, it really did function as a mirror, but there's someone behind the mirror watching you. You're being filmed and sound recorded all the time. Were they blackmailed over photographic, pornographic evidence of adultery? We don't know. This is, this is sheer conjecture. Maybe nothing happened. They clearly got along very well, and yes, it is possible for a man and woman to be simply good friends, but many speculated know that they had some um, romantic liaison. Um, anyway, the, 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 the theory goes that um, Gatesker was bumped off in order to make way for Wilson, who was then seen as on the, on the left wing of the Labour Party, who was duly elected leader of the Labour Party in 1963, when things were going very badly um, for, for the Conservative government under Harold Wilson. I think it was, was that sex was invented in 1963, just before the Beatles' first LP. Is that Philip Larkin who said that? And um, anyway, so he, he led Labour to a narrow victory in October 1964, because Wilson, uh, well, sorry, um, uh, Macmillan had stood down because he had prostate problems, um, but he actually wasn't that ill. He lived on for another 20-something years. Um, and um, Alec Douglas Hume succeeded him. He had to renounce his title as the Earl of Hume um, in order to get elected to the House of Commons. When he was elected leader of the Conservative Party, he wasn't, he wasn't even an MP. He was in the House of Lords. But there was a by-election coming up. He managed to get elected. He served as Prime Minister for exactly one year and one day. Um, and Wilson um, scorned him, saying after half a century of... Uh, for, uh, for social advance, the Conservatives elected as their leader a 14th Earl. And by the way, elected, he simply emerged from the magic circle. I can't remember which one, is it Rab Butler? Some, uh, some Conservative leader, was Conservative MP was miffed that he didn't become the Tory doyen and published an article in The Spectator about it. How, how's, it, how's the leader said to emerge? Even the MPs don't get to vote. So Macmillan's last act as Prime Minister was to advise Her Britannic Majesty to send for, for, for Douglas Hume as, as um, Prime Minister. Remember, it's home pronounced Hume because Alec Douglas Hume's brother was a well-known playwright and one of his plays was entitled Home Pronounced Hume. Um, anyway, so uh, Wilson narrowly won the October 1964 election. It looked like Labour was going to run away with it but their, their lead rapidly uh, evaporated in the polls and they won by about four seats and about two percentage points. But um, so uh, Douglas Hume had performed much better than many people anticipated. The economy was going quite well in the early 60s. Anyway, Wilson came, out, came in after a year and a half, he called the snap election and Labour won handily, a, a majority of 97. But uh, so uh, a lot of big changes under him, like the Abortion Act, the decriminalisation of homosexuality, the um, suspension of the death penalty, its eventual abolition. Um, setting up the Open University, various things like that, but there were strikes on, there were problems, the pound lost a lot of its value, decolonization was largely com co completed, the Rhodesia-Zimbabwe conflict erupted, the Ulster Troubles erupted towards the end of his time, and then in the early 70s there were lots of strikes, there was stagnation, there was inflation. Um, uh, he'd wanted to join the, the European Economic Community, he'd been rebuffed in the 60s, um, the Conservatives brought, brought the UK in in the 70s, New Year's Day in 1973, Wilson been against the terms of entry, not against in principle, he managed to get back into government in 1974, February 1974, because of that Who Governs Britain um, election called by Edward Heath, the Conservative leader, and so as people said, if you even have to ask the question, Who Governs Britain, the answer is not you. Um, Basically, because he said, we shan't be held to hostage by these trades unions going on strike. So um, Wilson was back in. Of course, the Labour Party was enmeshed with the trades unions. They're mainly funded by the trades unions. Um, many MPs uh, were, Labour MPs were superannuated trades union barons. Um, anyhow, he was more or less at their mercy, but he couldn't do enough of them. They were going on strike, but he was saying, you know, you're um, hacking off Middle Britain, you're pushing them more towards the Conservatives, who are um, openly antagonistic towards trade unions, particularly the miners' unions, was a traditional enemy of the Tory party. But um, uh, he faced an almost impossible situation with a wafer-thin majority in February 1974, calling another election in October 1974. So two elections within eight months, but it produced almost the same result. Anyway, so he sold it on for a while. It was a very, very difficult time. Um, the UK was paying back its debt to, to, to the United States. There was prices and incomes policy. One of the few things he managed to achieve was uh, 1975, that June referendum on continued membership of the European Union, supposedly getting against some concessions from the EEC. These were largely cosmetic. And then holding a referendum as the only way to resolve the situation. Um, remember, he'd gone into the 74 election promising to get the UK out of the EEC. But then he said, OK, we've renegotiated the terms 
will you do accept staying in the EEC? And it looked like most people were going to vote against, but after a spirited campaign with backing from um, many conservatives and all the liberals, the SNP, they narrowly, uh, well, sorry, they handily won. About 67% voted yes to staying in the EEC. Um, so uh, that was it. He had not been against the EEC in principle, just the terms of entry. Uh, but there's been largely cosmetic changes. So it's suspended collective cabinet responsibility on that single issue on uh, membership of the European Economic Community on, or the common market, as it was usually known at the time. So on all other issues, cabinet ministers were obliged to defend government policy in public. But on this one issue, they could speak their minds. They could be pro or contra, uh, something which was, which was replicated in the 2016 referendum on continued membership of the European Union. The it first occurred in the 1820s in the uh, Tory cabinet of um, well, the Earl of Liverpool, um, subsequently um, George Canning, um, or indeed the, the Duke of Wellington, about Catholic emancipation. So um, Wilson was really having enough of things um, because uh, he was trailing in the polls. It was an incredibly testing situation to take over um, with strikes, with rising unemployment, um, with the, the pound losing its value. Um, so he decided he had enough, and then he made a surprise announcement that he, he was on his 60th birthday. He was 60th birthday. He would stand down as prime minister. So Labour rapidly elected um, uh, James Callaghan to be the next prime minister, who didn't cause a general, ele general election, led Labour to its defeat in May 1979. Um, so that was Wilson. He retired. He was en ennobled as uh, Lord Wilson of Revo. Revo being this um, ruined abbey in Yorkshire. Uh, it was obviously torn down at the time of the dissolution of the monasteries. I've been there. I don't think I had any particular particular connection with there. He used to like to go on ho the holiday with the Silly Isles. Now, I think his wife might even be alive. Why has she just died? Because um, he was born 1916. If she was born 1920, she'd be about, about 100. But if, if she has died, I was astonished that she, she'd made it to be a centenarian or thereabouts. Um, so it was very... Uh, very unassuming, very self-effacing, but famously when he retired with the retirement honours, he advised Her Majesty the Queen to issue various honours, gongs to people, you know, knighthoods and so forth, to ennoble his um, dear friend Marcia Faulkner on the so-called lavender list, written on lavender paper, all the people who's going to ennoble, including her. And um, he, he always thought that um, MI5, that's the British Secret Service, was spying on him. He lived in no Lord North Street when he was Prime Minister, mostly not 10 Downing Street, because he didn't trust his own security services, who were just around the corner, almost literally. Um, that, that he thought that there was some hard right wing cell within, within MI5 trying to bring him down, like doing a Zinoviev telegram again. He gave some interviews to journalists about it, that there was this, this attempted putsch against him, that people, Huey Green and other right-wing nutcases, tried to recruit the commander of the British Army, the Rhine, i.e. in West Germany, to help overthrow him, that there ought to be a government of national unity, see if they could get Earl Mountbatten of Burma to serve as Prime Minister, Wilson be put under house arrest in Chequers. That's the Prime Minister's country residence. Anyway, none of it came off. I suspect a small amount of it is true. I mean, there might have been a few loons in MI5 who considered doing that, but the plot um, clearly wasn't um, wasn't uh, attempted, and I'm not sure how close they got to even executing it. Didn't manage to recruit many people into this conspiracy. So that's Harold Wilson, um, who died in 1995. So you should you should read his memoirs, as he notably said that elections are often decided by differential abstention. And he, he wrote, he was um, sort of a contemporary historian just after he lost office, writing a history of the first Labour government and recognising what slip-ups he'd made. So uh, he faced a very challenging time when he was Prime Minister, pressure from the Americans to come in um, into Vietnam, facing a run of the pound if he didn't from LBJ, send us just something, even, even just uh, the band of the Black Watch or something, so we can say there are more flags in Vietnam. We can tell the American public that our allies are also bearing the burden. But Wilson wisely carried on puffing on his pipe, knowing that such a policy just wouldn't sell in the United Kingdom. It would be particularly unpopular in the Labour Party. Where many people felt the American cause in Indochina was unrighteous. All right, that's enough about um, Harold Wilson. So book lessons with me in history and politics and religious studies and geography, French law and so forth, or choose me to translate from you from French, Spanish, Italian, Romanian, German or Russian. So I'll also help you with any essays, uh, theses or dissertations. I'm also a tour guide in Londinium. Toodaloo.